Welcome to 4-15-14-7. It's time for Michael's Toys. I'm your host, Michael, and in this show we talk about toys that belong to me. Except today we're going to be talking about a toy that I designed. And it could be yours so long as you are a subscriber to the Curiosity Box. What's the toy? Well, it's my special version of a cipher wheel. I call it Ink's Cipher Wheel. Who is Ink? Well, Ink is an anthropomorphic octopus. The ink stands for inquisitive. That's ink's full name. Ink did not design this wheel, but I wanted ink to get a little bit of credit. You see, ink is sort of the fourth Vsauce host. Jake, Kevin, and I can talk and show things. We make videos. We do live performances. But ink is all about hands-on learning, which is what the Curiosity Box is all about. Now, this wheel is based on the Mexican Army cipher wheel that was in use a long time ago. It may have even been used by Santa Ana during the Battle of the Alamo. <laughs> That was 182 years ago. But this version, Ink's Cipher Wheel, has a little bit of a twist. I wasn't happy just making one that was a replica of the old Cipher Wheel. This one, well, let's just get into using it. I think it'll be clear how it's used and what makes it special. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this bucket that I filled with slips of paper that have all kinds of different words on them. It also contains a little mini ink. By the way, technically the plural of octopus is either octopuses or octopodes. Octopi? Pfft, no. It's a Latinized Greek word, octopus. Which, by the way, since octopus means eight feet, does that mean that I am a bipus or a dipus? Dipusal? Yes, it does. Let's pick a word. Which word will I pick? Lots of choices. Okay, great. We've got a word. And this is the word that we are going to be encrypting. I picked the word... Corn, okay, perfect. Corn will be today's plain text, an unencrypted word. Now, to encrypt it, we're going to use our cipher wheel, and we're going to change every character in the word corn into a symbol. Let's take a look at the wheel. You'll notice that there are one, two, three, four, five concentric circles. The outer circle contains letters, and the inner four contain symbols. Now, you can rotate these circles however much you want, but once you've got a position that you like, it's locked in and you're ready to encrypt. Notice that every single letter corresponds to four unique symbols on the circles above it. These symbols are what you can encrypt the plain text letter into. But what do these symbols mean? They look a little bit strange. Now, a few of you watching out there might already have a bit of a hunch, but I'm gonna tell you the secret today in this episode. All of these symbols are made out of the same 10 figures. These are the 10 figures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. By numbering them off, I gave away what they stand for. They might not look like numerals, but when you start thinking about mirror reflections, it might make more sense. Watch what happens when I cover up one half of each symbol along this line of symmetry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Every numeral is there. By combining these all the way around the cipher wheel, I was able to create a pretty neat looking device. So let's find the first number, which is zero, 01. Zero, 01 is on the outer circle, the outermost circle that has symbols on it. There it is. Right now it corresponds to X. And then we have two, three, four, five, and so on, all the way up to 99, 100, and then V1, V2, V3, and ink. Okay, perfect, so let's start encrypting the word corn. All I need to do is set up my wheels into some initial position. It can be anything that I want, so long as my intended recipient also knows how to set up their wheel in the same way, so that it's easy for them to decrypt what I have made secret. All right, so let's begin with the word corn. We begin with the letter C. The letter C corresponds to 23, 50, 57, and 87. Now I can choose any one of those four, um, and I can write it down as either a number using Arabic numerals, or I can do it by just writing down the actual symbol. It's your choice. I'm gonna go ahead and write down the symbols, and I'm gonna pick 57, I like that. So 57 looks like this and then sort of an upside down triangle. All right, so that's the C. 
Now, O, let me look for O. Notice that it's very important that you don't rotate the rings while you're encrypting because you want to keep this in the same state. Okay, now O can be represented as 9, 36, 69, or 99. Ooh, you know what? I think I'm going to go with 99. I like how 99 looks like two uh, little uh, faces, maybe. I don't know, not, how, not so much the way I draw it, but there's 99. Then R, the letter R, can be 12, 39, 72, or V2. You know what? I'm gonna pick. I'm gonna pick 12 because I just love the letter M. It stands for Michael, obviously, and an underlined heart, which is love, but with an emphasis. All right. Now, finally, the letter N. Now, N corresponds to I, any one of these four that I want: uh, 8, 35, 68, or 98. I'm gonna pick 35. I like that. 30, and then the five is like this. I almost ran out of room, but I still succeeded in encrypting the word corn. Corn is my plain text. This is my cipher text. So if anyone else has their wheel set exactly like mine, they can decode this message. They just locate each individual number and then find that number on their wheel identically set to mine. So the first one is 57 right here, and it corresponds to the letter C, and 99, of course, corresponds to, where's 99? 99 is over here, it corresponds to O, and so on. Corn can be found. Now, how do you make sure that your intended recipient knows how to set up their wheel to match yours? Well, you can figure out whatever method that you want. Either you and your secret spy pal can agree beforehand on the appropriate setting for your wheels, or you can just use a different setting every time, but embed a key in your message that lets the recipient know how to set their wheels. One way to do that would be to simply pick one letter, either a letter that you have both agreed will be the key letter, or you can actually just pick one that you want and write it down. So for instance, in this message, I could say, all right, this is the position of my wheel, and um, in this case, the letter J aligns with Four, oops, that's not how you write four. 31, 65, 65. and finally, 95. Okay, now this can begin your message and allow your recipient to know how to set their wheel. Another way that I like a lot is to agree on some initial position of the wheel. For instance, perhaps the letter A is tied to the very lowest number on each wheel. In the case of this first wheel, that would be 0, 1. Where is 0, 1? There it is. Okay. And then obviously, uh, this means that Z is associated with 26. And so on the next wheel up, A would be associated with the next number, which is 27 there's 27, and so on. Now, from that initial position, you can then instruct your recipient to turn each wheel a certain number of times. For instance, let's just say that you pick the date or the time that you wrote your message. That way, it looks like you're just dating the message, but really, that date or time contains the key. So for instance, right now, it is 1050. So I could just write down 1050. That looks like a time. To someone who's trying to spy on my secrets, pfft, it's just the time. But your intended recipient will know to pay a lot of attention to the time or date or whatever you decide to encode this key in. So in this case, if you put your key in the time, they will know to set the wheel in a certain initial way and then turn each wheel according to these numbers. For instance, the first wheel up from the letters is turned once clockwise or anti-clockwise, however you guys have agreed beforehand. There's one turn. The next wheel up is turned zero times. The third wheel is turned five times clockwise. And the final wheel is turned zero times. Perfect, now it's all set up. You can be as creative as you want in disguising these messages. By the way, one thing I really, really love about these symbols is that because they're based on mirror symmetry, you can read them all in a mirror and they still make sense. For instance, in a mirror, Two will look like this. Boy, I'm not a very good drawer, but here's that line of, of reflection. Two just looks like 20. It's still legible as a number using our code. 
If your recipient knows to look in a mirror, but no one else does, even other people who know about this wheel, well, then you're one step ahead of those unauthorized users, aren't you? That, my friends, is Ink's Cypher Wheel. I'm very excited about it. It and a whole bunch of other stuff that I'm not gonna show you come in the latest curiosity box. I can't show you everything that comes in the box because, well, then it wouldn't be a curiosity box. It would just be a, I know what's in it box. I will give you one more peek at what's inside this current box, which is box number eight, by the way. We've, we've, this, we've now done eight of these. This shirt. This shirt comes in the box. I designed this along with the brilliant designer John Laser, who helped me on the Mysterium Cosmographicum shirt. I love depictions of the history of our universe, but a lot of them stop at present day. So I said, John, I wanna make one that goes from the Big Bang to one possible way our universe could end. My favorite way is the heat death. And so we work together on this shirt, which gives you an expanding cone, representing an expanding universe, with dates along the side, this side right here, that tell you the age the universe will be around when these different events happen. We've got the Big Bang at zero. Then we have, uh, moving through time, lots of stuff happens. Uh-oh, the sun becomes a red giant. Perhaps it destroys the Earth at that point, but if it doesn't, the Earth still exists, but the sun becomes a white dwarf. Then, over time, the Earth's orbit decays, the sun turns into a black dwarf, they, co they collide, and then eventually we reach the top of this design, the heat death of the universe, a point about a Google years in the future when energy will be the same everywhere and no work will be able to be done. The universe will have died in a heat death. <laughs> See you there. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me talk about the Curiosity Box. I am very proud of this. I was very lucky growing up as a kid. I was surrounded by science and math toys. And I mean, my dad loved them, so he loved uh, collecting them for himself, but then I would play with them anyway. Now I have a chance to give those toys to you. Uh, but this box isn't just good for your brain. It is good for everyone's brain because a portion of all proceeds goes to Alzheimer's research. So far, the Curiosity Box has raised more than $100,000 for Alzheimer's research. And that's my favorite part of this box. So thank you for watching and thank you for supporting brains. And as always, thanks for watching. Um, I'm choosing a lot from the uh, top wheel, but you know what? I can do what I want. Okay, so here we go. Take that away, get rid of this message, and we're left with this string of symbols. Now, to someone who, to someone who doesn't know the code, 